Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to YCG. I am your host, Fab. I'm so glad you're here and I have a question for you. Do you ever get caught as you're scrolling through and you see this great mix of food with cheese and all these things going on and you just have to watch the entire thing? Well, yeah, that's what we're talking about today. Food bloggers. <laughs> Do you like watching cooking channels? How about learning about food? Well, today we have three food bloggers that are gonna do just that. They're gonna make delicious food, they're gonna teach us the history of food, and some of them mix both of them together. Now, by watching today's show, you are going to, of course, be hungry. Uh, that was probably my stomach growling, but you're gonna leave this uh, being smarter as well. All right, let's talk about everybody's favorite food growing up, candy, am I right? Now, maybe you did not know, but the standard flavors of candy are different all around the world. Here in the United States, we've got typically lemon, orange, grape, banana, strawberry, sometimes mango, one of my favorites. But around the world, standard candy flavors are very different. So this YouTuber called JJ McAuliffe, he's done a little bit of studying about candy flavors around the world, and he's gonna teach us a little bit about it. Check it out. Hello friends, my name is JJ. So the other day I made a video exploring a simple question. Why is so much American candy fruit flavored? And why are these five fruits in particular so popular? As far as I was able to learn, the rise of fruit flavored candy in the early 20th century mirrored the rise of fruit as a popular part of the American diet more broadly. Which is to say, as certain fruits started to be grown and eaten more in the United States, so too did Americans naturally want candies that taste like oranges and cherries and strawberries and all of the other things they had recently grown to love. But of course, not everywhere in the world has the same taste as America, because not everywhere in the world has the same food history as America. And what I learned from the comments to that video is that many countries of this world have in fact developed their own discrete concept of the flavor canon in terms of what are their standard flavors that they expect things like candy or soda or other sweets to taste like. So let us now take a little tour of the flavors of the world. JJ has found that the world is filled with unique flavors that get put into candy. So I would love to try some of these other flavors. That guaraná sounds amazing. Uh, tamarind, of course, here in Southern California. I love things with tamarind. Uh, so I need to try more of that, but I think we all need to open up our candy flavor palette, don't you? All right, on to one of my favorite foods of all time, hot dogs. This is no lie. When I was growing up, my mom would boil a hot dog and just hand it to me. Like as a toddler, there are pictures of me just walking around with a hot dog. Okay, but hot dogs are amazing. But do you know how different people around the world prepare theirs? Well, Beryl Sharashewski has done extensive research and the answers look delicious. I wanted to jump through the screen, honestly. So good. Pretty much I'm eating a mozzarella stick paired with a pancake, paired with a hot dog, covered in sugar. And it's honestly one of the best things I've ever eaten. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beryl, and this week, I went through the comments and picked out a topic that one of you requested. Bing. Yep, I'm doing hot dogs. So, did a little research, talked to a bunch of people, and I have chosen five hot dog recipes from five countries that I thought were way more interesting and exciting than just ketchup and a bun. So, that's what we're doing. It's hot dog week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, seriously? That entire video had me captivated. I am definitely gonna try to make some of those variations of hot dogs. But Beryl not only does this fantastic video, but she makes other videos where she shows about international comfort foods or what kind of drinks and wines to pair with the food that you're eating. So definitely check out her channel and gain some knowledge on what you should do when you're eating. Our next recommendation is a genius of meats, one of the most creative chefs on the platform, Guga Foods. From delicious videos on how to cook Wagyu A5 beef to how to dry brine a steak with Nutella. Google Foods never misses an opportunity to create deliciousness 
and also show the science behind cooking. For today's cook, I'm taking these two beautiful tomahawk steaks and transforming them into the most incredible steak you've ever seen in your life. Making something like this is an experience that your family members will never forget and I hope you enjoy it. So let's do it. Okay, what? Did you see when he cut that apart and that meat and that cheese? Um, yes. Yes, please. Now, I don't think I can make that, but I'm going to pass this one off on my mom to try and make. Uh, I'm going to come back and let you know how it turns out. All right, so today we have some bonus content. It is simple yet creative on this platform, and the channel is called Ordinary Sausage. The mission of Ordinary Sausage is to make sausage out of anything. There are literally no limits. He has made sausage out of ice cream, pizza, cheese, even air. So in our recommendation from Ordinary Sausage, he makes sausage out of crickets. Yes, crickets. The things you feed to your gecko or bearded dragon. All right, here we go. Final episode in this house. We're absolutely not using four bags of crickets to make this sausage. I'm thinking more along the lines of one bag. Give it a little taste test here. <laughs> I should have psyched myself up to see this many dead crickets. All right, well, let's let's do an examination, shall we? Yo, did you hear him like throwing up when he bit that? That was nasty. That was nasty. When the crickets got stuck in the machine, that, that was nasty. Now, I might try a cheese sausage or something like that. An ice cream one, like at the fair. I could see them doing that at the fair and like deep frying it. That I might try. But the crickets, not for me. So thank you guys for watching. Hey, if we missed one of your favorite food bloggers, of course, please let us know down below in the comments. And like always, down below are the links to all of the videos that we showed you today. Check them out, watch them in their entirety. They are fun and exciting. And of course we can learn something from them as well. Once again, I've been your host Fab and this has been YCG.